Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm Jay from Jade Productions and we are again talking on the Long War as we continue our coverage of the various uh, factions and codices in the Long War. Um, and so if you clicked on this and you don't know what the Long War is, the Long War, as I'll just quickly get this out of the way, is a fan uh, edition of Warhammer 40,000, is an alternative to the current edition of Warhammer 40,000. Um, based on older editions, going back, streamlining them, bringing elements of other editions to form a cohesive, balanced game that's also lore-friendly, that's run by the community for the community. Um, and so there's all sorts of links below. Go back and check out the other videos. And uh, second uh, preface I have to give you is that because this is a living rule set, um, the rules that I'm going over today might not be the current ones that are actually, uh, you know, around when you are watching this because, you know, things are constantly being updated, things are being balanced uh, according to player feedback, points change, rules change, wording change, things get fixed, corrected, so just keep that in mind. I am reading them right now as they are with the versions I have. Um, and so today's video, we are talking about Space Wolves, my chapter. And the Space Wolves, uh, I'm gonna just flat out say this, this is probably gonna be an incredibly long one, despite my attempts to keep it as brief as possible. So let us dive right into the Space Wolves, um, first off. So, the first thing for the Space Wolves is their allegiance trait. So, first we have, uh, their, their three abilities that I get from their allegiance. First is the route. So... Instead of Angels of Death, which normally uh, Angels of Death is when you have when a Space Marine unit has higher leadership than something it's a melee with, it gets Fear One to you know try and make them panic. Um, instead, uh, what happens is Space Wolves get a flat plus one uh, to combat resolution. So yeah, and if they're Primaris, they get plus two. To their combat resolution. So, whereas regular Space Marines, if potentially you are a higher leadership than your opponent, you can try and make them panic and run away, this is more guaranteeing that they will take a panic check. So, it's that little bit more for ensuring that you're always going to be at least tying combat or winning combat in, in ways that let you push your opponent back. Because the Space Wolves like sustained combat and then running guys down. So, there they are the route, hence their name. Um, then, there's the Vilka Fenrika. So, uh, the Vilka Fenrika uh, gives your Space Wolves the counter-attack special rule, so that they'll always get a plus one attack uh, as if they charged, even if they were charged. And they have night vision, because, well, night vision dogs. Um, yeah, and then they do have some unique ones. And now, their Lessons of Rus is a little bit different to the uh, successor chapter version, which is featured in the Core Codex. Uh, and this one is... It, it, let, let me explain. So, in the regular successor chapter, they share the same first section, in that Space Wolves units can never be placed in Deep Strike or use a Deep Strike special rule, because Space Wolves don't believe in that, and they always did right up until 7th edition decided to just ignore it. Um, then... A Space Wolves army, and this is the part that's unique to the Space Wolves if you're playing actual Space Wolves and not a successor. A Space Wolves army must contain at least two Blood Claws, Primaris Blood Claws, Phobos Blood Claws, Grey Hunters, Primaris Grey Hunters, or Phobos Grey Hunters for every 1,000 points. So you, you gotta you gotta have at least two of these in any combination. So, yeah. And these are these are your unique troop choices that the Space Wolves have. So... Then, as we move on, we can see that they have a lot of restrictions. Um, there's a lot of restrictions. They can't take captains, they can't take regular marines, there's so many things that they can't take, and that's why, and this is going to be a longer video, despite my attempts to keep it down, because they have specific Space Wolf replacements for almost all of these. So... We're just going to keep going on. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, Space Wolves War Gear. So Space Wolves have uh, a bunch of different extra war gear that they can take. One of the first ones is something very unique. 
uh, they can actually take Finn and Rizian wolf companions. Um, any Space Wolves character can purchase uh, up to two of these, and uh, they become part of the character's unit, and they don't prevent the character from joining other units, even though the character is now a unit of three. So, and they get the, the Fenrisian wolves that come with them have their own little stat block here, and uh, the wolf companions, compared to regular Fenrisian wolves, have uh, more wounds, more attacks, and higher weapon skill. So, they're kind of elite wolves, if you will. They've been trained better. Um, and uh, they can become cyber wolves uh, for an extra 10 points to get bionics for a 6-up invul. Um, so, yeah, there is there is that. Um, it's a pretty solid and fun and fluffy upgrade. I love giving extra wolves to my space wolves. Um, then, there's Runic Armor, which was a replacement for Artificer Armor. It gives you the same things as Artificer Armor, the 2 plus save, but then it goes one step further and gives you a 5 plus and vulnerable save, and the Deny the Witch special rule to help uh, nullify opponent's psychics and mm, hopefully make them perils a bit more. Then, there's the Wolf Tail Talisman, which is not a cheap thing, but uh, the Wolf Tail Talisman is fairly strong, especially if you're expecting to go up against a lot of psychic powers. Um, when a unit that's equipped with it gets uh, targeted for an attack or a by, by a psychic weapon or by psychic power in general, uh, they get to roll a d6 on a 5+. plus. It's just negated. The, the psychic power just doesn't go off because, uh, yeah, yeah, totally not magic. Um, <laughs> uh, the Belt of Rust is a, basically it's a replacement that the Space Wolves have for the usual uh, Iron Halo. Uh, and then there's the Thunderwolf mount. The Thunderwolf mount is uh, one that is uh, it's fairly expensive. It gives makes them cavalry type, gives them plus one strength, toughness, wounds, and gives them extra close combat weapon. Uh, Thunderwolves are still pretty good because cavalry is pretty good. So we'll come to Thunderwolves in a bit. Then we'll go into Frost weapons. Frost weapons are the unique weapons of the Space Wolves, and uh, they have a unique thing. Um, and they have Reaping Blow as a unique special rule. So, Reaping Blow, uh, basically, when you attack with the weapon, if the hit roll uh, is equal or to, equal to or greater than the value of X, it automatically wounds and penetrates. No wound or penetration roll is required. That's an absurdly powerful mechanic. Um, which is why Frost Weapons cost an extra 5 points. Um on top of the regular weapon that you're buying and replacing it with. So they're they're pretty strong, fortunately. But there is a thing of the Reaping Blow isn't too high on a lot of them. Until you get to, like, the really strong stuff. And so, in addition to that, pretty much all of the uh, power weapon equivalents of Frost weapons are plus one strength, as they always have been. Um, so, you know, Frost Claws are strength plus one AP3, and they've got all the usual things that Frost Claws have. So that's pretty good. Um... For those interested, the Reaping Blow, uh, lore-wise, represents the fact that Frost Weapons, when they hit you with their, their, their energy fields, they actually emit um, so much freezing, cooling uh, energy that uh, the enemy actually, like, when it stabs them, it actually like, flash freezes parts of them, and then the blade goes through and shatters the ice. Ludicrously cool stuff. Anyway, um, I, 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 did, I did say the Space Wolves are my guys. So... Um, and you've got a bunch of these. Um, the ones that I'll call attention to are things like the Fenrisian Great Axe, which are Sunder, Reaping Blow 4+, and that's, that's like a wolfen weapon. Um, and that's uh, pretty good. A actually, no, the Fenrisian Great Axe is uh, the one used on a Dreadnought, actually. So, yeah, that's why that one's ludicrously strong. Uh, the Great Frost Axe, so below it, is used by uh, Wolfen. It's strength plus four, it's AP2, it's Sunder, it's unwieldy, it's Reaping Blow 5 up, it's two-handed. Um, Hellfrost weapons are considered uh, frost weapons, so they are just ranged versions of frost weapons, and they're they're kind of like mini Laz Cannons and Melters. They're, they're pretty good. Um, then there's rune weapons. Rune weapons are a different kind of weapon um, used by their, their rune uh, seers. Um... They're rune priests, uh, and so these are regular power weapons, but um, in the combat phase, a uh, model armed with it can make a psychic test, and they gain plus two to the strength characteristic 
of their weapon uh, until the end of the phase if they succeed. So, yeah. And, of course, if you fail, you perils. So, you know, you can get a Rune Priest who can go up to Strength uh, 7 with a Rune Axe if he succeeds in doing his thing, because he'll go to Strength plus 3 and Strength 4 base. Um, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah. And so, you know, pretty good stuff there. You can get a Strength 6 Rune Sword. Um, you're not bad. But they're only for Rune Priests. Next, we come to the Warlord Traits. So... There's three Warlord Traits to choose from. For your Warlord Traits, each one does something a little bit different. So, your Howl of the Death Wolf is for supporting your army. The Resolve of the Bear is for keeping your Warlord alive. Rage of the Berserker is for making your uh, Warlord a Blender. A, a Smash Captain is the old term. Uh, so, yeah. Now... The Hell of the Death Wolf uh, is a once per game. It's a once per game warlord trait. So you got to time it just right. But when you do, for the rest of the turn, all your space wolves in your army get fleet, and fleet lets you advance and charge. So it is the turn in which you are preparing to move as fast as possible across the board and get a charge off. Very very strong. Very very powerful. Got to be used correctly to get the most out of it. Then you have Resolve of the Bear. So, Resolve of the Bear, uh, your Warlord gets Feel No Pain 5+, plus, so they get a little bit uh, extra chance to ignore uh, wounds put against them. And all attacks against them uh, have minus 1 to wound rolls, which is really powerful. Uh, so, really strong uh, against uh, when your Warlord, particularly when they're by themselves and don't have a unit to uh, take the wounds for them. Um, then... Rage of Berserker is very simple. Your Warlord gains the Rage 3 special rule. And so Rage is a special rule in which uh, at the start of the combat phase, you have to decide whether or not you're going to Rage, uh, if you have the Rage, and you gain a number of extra attacks equal to the value next to your Rage. So in this case, Rage 3 would give your Warlord three extra attacks. But Rage comes with a downside, which is why it's a choice to use it. Because if you choose to Rage... You get minus one to your weapon skill, which can affect what you're hitting on and what your to hit roll will be against your targets. So it's something you're going to have to weigh up about whether or not you are willing to sacrifice and hit a little bit worse to, you know, get those extra attacks. So those are the wall of traits. I, I quite like them as a Space Wolves player, personally. Um, then, go into Space Wolves. They're Tempasta's Psychic Powers. So... Space Wolves have their own unique psychic power. They have their psychic discipline. They have three of them. Uh, so the first one is Stormcaller. So this one's really powerful. It affects uh, you cast in your opponent's uh, shooting phase, and the car the psyker and any uh, attached unit can only be hit on an unmodified roll of a six plus until the end of the phase. Very good for keeping melee. Uh, very expensive units like Terminators alive and safe from shooting. Now, you're not going to be able to get too many Rune Priests out onto the field, so that Psychic Power, and because it only affects something he's attached to, you're going to have to pick very specifically about what it is you want to keep alive. But there's a good chance you'll keep it alive so long as you can consist consistently get this Psychic Power off without periling. Um, Jaws of the World Wolf is a... It's a Psychic pseudo weapon it's not a psychic weapon it's a psychic power that deals straight damage which makes it really interesting um and unique you use it in your shooting phase and uh, you get to select a single enemy unit within 12 inches and you roll a d6 and on a one uh they get a single wound allocated against them uh so for each model in the unit um that is considered to be instant death as the world opens up and, and buries them um and uh they can't take saves against this uh, so it's basically you cause them to take a super dangerous terrain test rather than a regular dangerous terrain test, but it can't target things that can fly because you know they can just fly across, fly above the ground. And then there's Wolf Spirit, which is one that comes and uses in the combat phase, and this one is really interesting as well. Um, you use this, and your Psyker actually summons two of the Fenrisian Wolf companions 
to be part of his unit until the end of the phase. And so these guys get added to the initiative order, they get added to the squad, and as he summons these, like, spiritual wolves to attack his opponents and fight alongside him. And uh, they count as normal models for, like, uh, they fight at their own initiative step, um, they count towards combat resolution if they die, or and anything they kill also counts towards combat resolution, and uh, they also have a 5 plus invulnerable save. And you summoned two of them. So... It's really unique psychic power that I just kind of love. Rather than just, like, getting extra attacks, you, you know, you full-on summon extra wolves to fight with. You full-on summon spirit wolves. Like, ephemeral warp demon things. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> totally legitimate uh, spirits of Fenris to fight with you. So, pretty neat. Um, and then... Space Wolves have their sagas of old. Uh, Space Wolves priests know these ones instead of the regular, you know, uh, litanies from the Core Codex. So, the Space Wolves replace their psychic powers and their litanies with this. Um, with, with these two. And then their sagas of old, uh, their priest in any attached unit with the Saga of Warrior Born get plus one to the weapon skill until the end of the phase. Very solid, very powerful. Saga of the Unbroken, uh, that's one that's very similar to the other one that the Space Marines have, which, you know, they automatically pass all pinning and paddock tests, so you use this and it's possible to make something fearless for a phase, if you succeed. Um, and then Saga of the Beast Slayer gives you preferred enemy beasts and preferred enemy monsters. So, good for when you're trying to hack down a, uh, you want those rerolls to wound on, uh, Gribblies, big gribblies rather than a plus one to hit so very good but also obviously very combat orientated now then we go into the space wolves uh their relics they have two relics both are very very expensive relics they are very expensive relics by comparison to all the other relics we've looked at for the space wolves the wolfenstone currently now of course points can change currently 40 points but it does a lot of shit. So once per game, the power of the stone can be unleashed, and the guy holding it gets plus one to their movement and strength characteristics. They get rage one, they get fleet, they get frenzy, they get sprint two, and a six up feel no pain. But they can no longer join any other unit except for wolf and units. So you dude, basically once per game, you can unleash the power of the stone, and your guy goes wolfen. Which is neat. Is that what Wolfen used to be in older editions before they became their own kind of unit? Guys would kind of just go feral and berserk and go crazy and they could, you know, maybe they would get extra rage and, you know, be, be not so. Um, the Wolfenstone, it's very expensive, but it gives you a lot of rules and can help turn, like, make real smash captains. Like, if you combine them with some of the other stuff you can do here, um, you can make some ludicrously strong characters. Um, then... There's the Armor of Rust, and this is also very, very expensive, because it's very, very strong. Um, a model equipped with this war gear gets a 2-plus armor save, and a 3-plus invulnerable save. 3-plus invulnerable saves are very rare, so that's very strong. In addition, all enemy units within 3 inches of a model equipped with this war gear at the start of the combat phase have minus 1 to their initiative characteristic. So not only are you going to be harder to kill in combat, you're making all your enemies fight slower. So, and that means often, in a lot of cases, because Space Marines have a really solid initiative, you're going to be massacring them without them getting a chance to fight back. Very good in Marine on Marine action. Space Wolves excel, as they rightly should, funnily enough, that's what they do lore-wise and what they were intended for by the Emperor, kill other Marines. It's what they do very, very well. Um, yeah. So, there's that. And then we go into the upgrades. Now, Space Wolves have a lot of upgrades, a lot of various upgrades for making various uh, kinds of units of their stuff, making some guys uh, Kingsguard, uh, making them, you know, um, veterans, and getting them unique stuff to be Wolfguard. Um, so, there, there's all sorts of things. Maybe they're Kingsguard. The wolf translation's overdone. Anyway, <clears throat> don't get distracted on the lore, Jay. 
uh, and there's there's a lot of upgrades. I'm not going to go through them. I'm just going to scroll past them. Um, and there there's another one. There's another thing that gives a lesser version of the Wolfen thing uh, for fewer points. So there's that. Now, there we'll go to the Space Wolves Rite of War. So Space Wolves Rite of War. Um, here's the thing. They have one Rite of War. I don't know why it has points next to it. That's that's a typo, so ignore that. I'll report that uh, to the long war later to fix. So, the Fenrisian Great Company. Your army must include at least one Jarl, three units of Grey Hunters, Phobos Grey Hunters, or Primaris Grey Hunters. So, it's forcing you to take three units. Normally, oh, you already have to take two for every 1,000 points. Now you're, you're, you're taking at least three minutes. So, there's that. Because Space Wolves want you to spam infantry. And then you have to have at least one unit of Thane Guards in your army. This is important. We'll keep this in mind later. Now, because they want you to spam troops, you gain three additional troop slots per 1,000 points. And then all your infantry get out flank. So, your wolves are coming in from all angles and circling foes, and there's a lot of them as fighting like a pack. And then, the main thing about this right of war is that you get to modify it based on your choice because you have to select one of the great companies to represent when you choose this right of war. And so each great company does something drastically different to change how your space wolves play uh, to what is uh, the lore of that great company. So the champions of Fenris, uh, Thane battle leaders, do not take up HQ slots when purchased. Sweet. Uh, that's the hero spam one. Uh, Blood Moors. Uh, you can re-roll reserve rolls for Grey Hunters, Primaris Grey Hunters, or Phobos Grey Hunters when one of our flanks. So this this is the, the Blood Moors really want to come in from different angles and pick you apart coming in with uh, good shooting units in the uh, the Blood Claws with specialist weapons to, to pick out targets and eliminate enemies from the back line and close in and surround and kill. Um, the Sea Wolves. The Sea Wolves love transports and mechanized warfare. Your impulses, your Razorbacks, and your Rhinos automatically pass pinning tests. So, they're not being slowed down, and uh, their shooting's not going to get worse from being pinned. Uh, the Sons of Morkai. The Sons of Morkai love using Wolf Scouts, and for Space Wolves, Wolf Scouts are a veteran unit. They are an elite's choice. They are quite strong. They are regular Space Marines. They're actually quite experienced Space Marines, quite old Space Marines, uh, typically, um, who don't fit in in generic packs. So they run as Wolf Scouts. Um, so it's, they're, they're veterans. And so they're quite a unique choice. They're very glass cannony, but they're also very versatile. Glass cannons, as it were. Uh, then you have the Red Moons. And the Red Moons, they love Long Fangs. Um, and so they can take Longfangs as troops' choices. So you still have to take your, you know, Grey Hunters in this right of war, but now you can bring good old Longfangs, the oldest of the old, that's why they're Longfangs, um, and their heavy weapons to bear as troops' choices. So a lot of infantry spam, changing the way you spam infantry. Uh, the Death Wolves love their Fenrisian Wolves, so now you can take Fenrisian Wolves as troop choices if you pick them. Uh, the Storm Wolves, uh, they make, rather than change up you what infantry you can take, they make your existing infantry better um, by giving them the Relentless special rules. So if you're going to pivot into infantry quite heavily with this Rite of War, uh, if you pick uh, Storm Wolves, all your infantry will get a nice general bonus. So pretty good. The Iron Wolves uh, is now for... If you want to do pseudo tank warfare, uh, and you really like land raiders, so you get to include a uh, single land raider, land raider redeemer, land raider crusader, repulsor, or repulsor executioner, as a HQ in place of your Jarl. But the vehicle has to be your warlord and may not be your warlord trait. You get a command tank, which, you know, doesn't, uh, it's pretty good. You, you now have a command tank warlord. So, woe to anyone who wants to take those out. And you get pretty good ones. And that becomes something you have to take. So, yeah. Uh, the Drake Slayers. 
are for if you really like Thane guards and you really want to run a super elite army of lots of Thanes. So Thane guard can be taken as troop choices and are limited three per detachment instead of their usual. Uh, the black mains are if you really like drop pod assaults. Infantry units uh, that uh, have the Hammer of Wrath, a special rule, the turn they disembark from a drop pod. So you come down a drop pod, you howl the death wolf, you charge, you get in there, and uh, you give Hammer of Wrath impact attacks when you charge out of a, a drop pod. Time it right, and you can deal a lot of extra damage. It's very much an Alpha Strike one. Uh, the Fire Howlers. Um, is one that loves overwatching and loves flamers. Uh, all your infantry, when you go to charge or are charged, get to make a single attack with a hand flamer. As if they were equipped with one. So, that's a really interesting one. And, uh, yeah, it's good for getting those extra bits of damage in, as you, like, literally the lore of that is that they like to breathe fire into their enemies as advancing, like, they, they'll literally drink and then they'll breathe fire into them. It's crazy. Um, then there's the Grimbloods. Uh, Grimbloods are if you really like flamers as a space wolf. Uh, fire and ice, baby. Um, and all your flamers, hand flamers and heavy flamers, get the shred special rule. So if you're gonna go flamer heavy, which means you're going anti-infantry heavy, uh, that's gonna get better. And then the last one is if you don't want to play as any of these, and you rather just pick something generic, you get to pick, you have the Lost Companies, which represent any of the companies lost over time. Because these, these companies here are as they are in the 41st and 42nd millennium. If you want to play something lost or your own company, you pick the Lost Companies. And you can include one additional unit of Wolfen in your army. So, very generic, but uh, lets you get an extra Wolfen unit. And Wolfen are pretty good. Now, there's a lot of unique units for the Space Wolves. And I'm not going to go into too much depth about most of them. Mostly because uh, we've already... Oh, we're doing fairly well on time because I'm going pretty quickly. But I, I don't want to get bogged down in these. So I'm going to go through these pretty rapid fire. Jarl is a captain replacement that has better weapon skill. And pretty much every option that a Space Marine can take, they can take. They have no restriction. A Thane battle leader is a lieutenant replacement. Um, with higher weapon skill and every option that you could possibly ever want uh logan grimner he's your chapter master he's pretty good you can put on the santa slay his axe of morkai is pretty beastly it really likes uh punching psychers and giving them a bad day he's resolve the bear he's a fairly good fighter he's in terminator armor um so yeah uh Nyal stormcaller fairly well tooled out uh rune priest um, he's pretty okay, but he's mastery level 2, um, so, yeah. He's got some interesting attacks, he's just a particularly beefy, uh, named rune priest. Uh, Ulrich the Slayer, Ulrich the Slayer is a particularly beefy and nice, uh, uh wolf priest. Really good, he's got Monster Hunter, he's got Howl of the Death Wolf, he's got a 4 plus and vulnerable save. He makes a unit he's attached to fearless in combat. Overall, real solid guy. Very expensive, though. Uh, his points will probably come down, though, from the time this video is made um, and published. Uh, Chrome Dragon, Grey, Dragon Gaze. He's uh, a solid fighter. He's Rage of the Berserker. His Worm Claw is pretty swish. Um, he's a real beat stick of a character, but there's not a lot to say on him per se. Other than then, he's pretty cheap for what he does. Um, Arjack Rockfist, real, real classic. Um, I remember when you had to try and convert this model, uh, all the way back in, uh, 4th edition. Um, and then when he finally had a model and they really wanted to sell it, which is something that the Long War doesn't do, they don't incentivize you to, to buy things by making things really good, uh, they made Arjack really good, so everyone had one. Um, here, Arjack is just a fairly decent fluffy uh thane guard with uh terminator armor storm shield foe hammer he, he's really good at taking down multi-wound targets uh, 
uh, Ragnar Blackmane, uh, very similar to Chrome Dragon Gaze, a little bit more expensive, very similar, very good at leading his guys, uh, very strong at attacks, super good at uh, killing stuff. Him and Drom, uh, Grom uh, are very similar, but Grom's a little bit cheaper, because he does a little bit less. Uh, Harold Deathwolf is your good old uh, captain, but mounted. He comes on a Thunderwolf. He's got his axe. He's got Glacius, which is a very strong weapon. Um, he's super good at killing monsters and uh, multi-wound targets, uh, like characters and uh, Tomes and the like. Um, and he's cavalry, so he moves fast and hits like a truck. Uh, Canis Wolfborn is his offsider, very good at shredding Griblies with his Frost Claws, otherwise very similar, just a little bit weaker. Uh, very high strength though. Um, you got Bjorn, good old classic Bjorn, who's a named character Dreadnought with Warlord traits, he's hard to kill, he's high toughness, he's really high weapon skill list, so he's basically a chapter master in a, in a Dreadnought, and uh, he's really good as a result. Um, so yeah. So Blood Claws are basically, these are your Assault Intercessor replacements. Um, they're got Rage 1, um, and all the usual stuff from basic Space Marine Infantry with Chainsword and Bolt Pistol. Uh, but they are basically Scouts and Power Armor. They have lower weapon skill and ballistic skill. So they have a little harder time hitting. But uh, they also uh, always have to charge unless they have a character with them. So they have some downsides, but you field these in Bricks of Ten, and for what they do, they're fairly, they're, they're okay-ish. Um, they're great f uh, fodder and great speed bumps and melee as a nice uh, first wave. Grey Hunters, uh, these are your classic Space Marines. These are your core Space Marines. These are, uh, unlike the Blood... Uh, Blood Claws, which are scouts and power armor. The Grey Hunters are proper Space Marines. They have the higher weapon skill, ballistic skill. They have shooting. They have melee. They can do a bit of everything. They can take special weapons. Uh, their true grit lets them treat their uh, bolt weapons as uh, pistols when targeting enemies within three inches of them. So, yeah. They're pretty solid uh, and uh, pretty reliable in melee. So. This is the first real important unit we're going to talk about. This is the Thane Guards. So, Thane Guards are your elite. These are your unique, special veterans that the Space Wolves have. So, they have all the things that standard veterans have, except they have Last Stand, Company of Heroes, they all come in runic armor, and they're all weapon skill 5. You are limited to one per detachment. But there's an important thing about this. You can build this unit to actually be really, really huge. Um, they can have, like, a, a max 15 models in a Thane Guard unit. And the Company of Heroes lets you actually distribute them into different things, depending on what you want to do. So, let's go into this. They're really good fighters. They'll always get to fight so long as one guy remains. And the Company of Heroes... And, and they have... Artificer armor with a 5-up invul save and deny the witch built in from their runic armor. They also have every single option under the sun, so you can build them however you want. Each individual guy can be completely unique. And then, you have Company of Heroes. So let's talk about this. So, instead of deploying this as one unit during deployment, basically you get to, uh, to divide up the unit, or the models in the unit, uh, between two different ways. So, uh, they can be deployed as, uh, of a, as a unit of 3 to 15. So you can deploy them as one giant unit, with a minimum of 3 guys. So you buy a 5-man unit, and you can deploy them as a 3-man unit, and put 2 others elsewhere with the second option. Um, or, one guy uh, can be put inside of a other Space Wolves infantry type unit, and they become part of that unit for the rest of the game. So that's how you represent and do the good old classic thing that Space Wolves have always been able to do, and that's in including, like, uh, their Wolf Guard, their, their Thane Guards, um, in their core units. So, yeah, really interesting unit, really strong, crazy versatile, uh, and you know, plus they're all two wounds, two attacks. 
They have your own unique Dreadnought with unique Dreadnought options. They got their Hounds of Morkai, their unique uh, Anti Psyker Primaris uh, Reaver unit. I uh, got Lucas the Trickster, who's just Lucas the Trickster. He'll run in, kill a bunch of stuff, and then when someone inevitably punks him, he might kill everything nearby. The Murder Fang for when you just want anything in that general area to die in melee. Uh, Wolfen, for again, when you want anything in that generic area to die in melee. Uh, the Wolfen, uh, have seen a little bit of improvement and a little bit of nerfs. They're not quite hitting as hard, but they come with Frost Claws instead of general, generic Wolfen Claws. As a Space Wolves player, this makes sense to me that they took that option away in the Long Wolf, because I've never seen a single Space Wolves player ever run them with the basic Wolfen Claws, because it was just not worth it so yeah um otherwise they're two wounds or two attacks they're extra strength um and they have seen an improvement that they have slightly higher leadership and they have a three up save instead of having like broken power armor which gave them a four up armor save they've just got power armor which gives them a three up armor save just just to represent that and then they have a crazy long list of special rules, which is why they're so expensive when combined with their crazy good war gear, such as Thunder Hammer and Storm Shields, Great Frost Axes, like their Sprint 3, their Frenzy, their Fleet, their Rate. They have so many attacks, and they go so fast. Like, they're running and charging with plus 3 to the run and the charge. <laughs> like, they're crazy good. Which is why they're crazy expensive. 275 points is really expensive. Wolf Scouts are veteran scouts that we talked about. They're basically Thane guards, they're, but they're in scout armor, and they're not limited. Uh, they got scout, infiltrate, outflank, um, and their weapons got five, two wounds, two attacks. And they've got a lot of options. Not every option under the sun, but a lot of options. Um, then, uh, you got the good old Stormwolf gunship, which is, you know, it's quite expensive because it's got a lot of guns on. It's got quite heavily arm, uh, armed, um, and it's a transport, and so it's quite a good missile boat um, with quite a good, uh, quite good weapons. Stormfang gunship, a uh, little bit more expensive, but uh, more heavier guns. Sky claws are your assault marine replacements with jump packs. Uh, Swift claws are guys on bikes. They're basically blood claws on bikes these guys are blood claws with uh jump packs you got your thunderwolf cavalry now so the thunderwolf cavalry they're cheaper but they have some fundamental differences that make them a little bit better base because you're going to be putting a fair amount of points into these they're still cavalry they move fast hit fast and they're strong and tough. Each one is being ridden by a veteran. So these are all Thane Guards. So they have the Thane Guard stats. And then they're on Thunderwolves. So. They're three wounds. They're toughness five. They're strength five from being on Thunderwolves. They're weapon skill five. And they come with runic armor base. So they've got a two up, five ups. They're real good. They've got the last stand as well, so they've got all the things that Thane Guards have that make them great, but you get fewer of them in a unit. And they are also limited one per detachment, so you want to build big units of these. Keep that in mind. You don't get many of these. But they also have a lot of options, and they can be made to be a super killy thing. They're basically a little bit more expensive than Terminators. Um, wolves. Wolves are wolves. Long fangs. Long fangs are long fangs. Um, so long fangs, because they're veterans, um, have an extra wound, extra attack, but instead of having an extra weapon skill, extra ballistic skill. So they're really good shooters. Um, and they have the extra leadership. So your devastators are just better, but they're more expensive by quite a lot. Um,. And that is it. That is it for the Space Wolves. So we managed to get through that rather quickly. Um, of course, you can go and read this. I did not cover a lot of things. And of course, uh, you probably spotted a few mistakes. Probably most of which will be fixed by the time this video is even published. 
Um, but yeah, you can go below, check it out, check out The Long War, drop into the Discord or the Facebook, ask questions, get in on it if you're interested. Um, until then, I hope you found this interesting. I have been Jay from Jade Productions, signing off. Have a good day. Keep chill.